Predator fans and welcome to a rather unusual video that was inspired after I finished reading Predator Stalking Shadows. Upon reading this book, I was introduced to a unique hunter that Dutch and his team encountered whilst on a hunting ground. If you have not read the book, I want to take this opportunity to tell you that this video will contain some spoilers. Therefore, if you still wish to read Stalking Shadows, then you may want to close this video down now. The creature I'm referring to was incredibly deadly and managed to injure two and kill three of Dutch's ten-man team of specially selected and trained predator hunters. This occurred during the rainy season in Malaysia's Cloud Forest, which made the mission more difficult as the weather interfered with the team's ultraviolet goggles. Due to this, the team were forced to go on the defensive, which is considered a poor strategy against the Yautja as they are natural hunters who prefer being on the offensive. So, what did the creature I'm referring to look like? This predator was described as being small, no taller than six foot, thin with long limbs, sleek, with dark flesh more like the skin of a shark than the traditional common rough scaly hides that Yautja have. To make matters worse, this creature was described as the smallest, fastest hunter ever encountered, and Dutch could not believe how swiftly it moved, describing its speed in the following ways as live as a monkey, darting around at incredible speeds. Insect fast, and shooting it would be like trying to shoot a dragonfly or mosquito, possessing sheer swiftness and agility. In addition to its speed, the creature is described as having an unusually high-pitched scream, as well as being immensely strong. The creature even managed to send Dutch flying out of a tree with one arm. As well as its impressive physical attributes, this creature also proved to be exceptionally cunning, luring Dutch's team into several traps when they thought they had it hurt. I will read you one example of this from the book. They followed the blood trail for several minutes, until they came to another clearing, bisected on the upper left side by a fast-flowing stream that had been swollen by the rain. Here, on the edge of the water, the trail petered out, and Dutch looked left and right, trying to decide whether their prey would have followed the course of the stream downhill, or would it have had the strength and time to fight its way uphill against the flow of the tide, and take refuge in the rocky, mossy terrain he could see through the tangle of trees. Angus pointed across the water. There. And immediately, Dutch saw two telltale spots of green blood glowing on a rock on the far side of the stream. Swiftly, and with the sense of mounting dread, he scanned the area beyond, and saw another streak of alien blood on the trunk of a tree, with a spreading canopy of branches halfway up the slope that rose from the stream bed. So their prey could still climb. Shit. And if it was up in that tree... Take cover! Dutch yelled. His men needed no further explanation. They scattered in all directions. Even as Dutch was running, whilst at the same time raising his gun to fire into the trees, he glimpsed something slicing down through the air, a flying disc that moved at an unholy speed. He threw himself to one side, his head whipping round to see Angus doing the same. The disc passed through the space where Angus had been standing a split second earlier and sliced a chunk out of a tree trunk behind him as though it was made of putty. The disc had to be remote controlled, because after slicing effortlessly through the tree, Dutch saw it halt in mid-air, then abruptly change direction, spinning around the other side of the tree and swooping down on them like an eagle. As Dutch flung himself behind a rock close to the edge of the gushing stream, he saw another of his men, Rob Dunkirk, running toward a tree from the base of which several trunks sprouted like the fingers of a giant hand. With deadly purpose, the disc homed in on Dunkirk and sliced his left arm from his body. It did it so quickly and cleanly that Rob just kept on running, perhaps only realising something was wrong when his gun, which he had been holding onto with both hands, suddenly became unbalanced in his one-handed grip and sagged in front of him. Dutch saw him stumble as he half tripped over the drooping gun barrel, but whether Rob did ever realise he had died with only one arm, Dutch would never know, because a split second later, the disc swooped back around and cleaved straight through Dunkirk's chest. Realising that they are faced with an even deadlier predator than normal, Dutch's team discussed the creature's unusual traits, offering several theories as to what it could be, which I will read to you now. It was small, Dutch said, six feet tall at most, thin with long limbs. It moved fast 
and I mean fast like a blur. You think it's something else, Angus said, some other species. Dutch had already considered that, maybe. Or maybe it's artificially enhanced. Or it could just be young. A teenager, Angus suggested. It's possible, Dutch said. No reason to think that they're not like us, growing to maturity, different body types. Whatever that thing is, it's faster than we're used to, but it still has weaknesses, and we have to take advantage of those. Maybe it's not as strong as other hunters we've come across. Could be if we draw it into a trap, we could overpower it. We don't know that though, right? Said Brand, a black guy built like the biggest, baddest linebacker ever, who had a pattern of swirls shaved into the dark stubble on the side of his head. I mean, if this thing's got metal arms and legs or whatever... An alien fucking cyborg, Carter hissed, who looked excited at the prospect. Focus, Dutch said. That thing is just fucking fast, period. Fast or not, it still fucking bleeds, right? Cook said. He looked like a bewhiskered pirate. Obviously, this is a unique and extremely interesting individual, and I love how the authors Morris and Moore offered us clues as to what the creature could be. Their show-and-not-tell approach is something I really love, as it gets us fans thinking about the possibilities. I will now attempt to offer some of my theories and explanations based on the points from the book. Could it be a female Yaucha? Unlike the novel AVP Prey, the video game Hunting Grounds has presented us with females that are clearly smaller than the males. Although I do not like the appearance of the female Yao during the game, it is the game Hunting Grounds that we have to go by in this discussion, because Stalking Shadows was written to set up that game. Therefore, the smaller size and high-pitched scream of this creature could support the theory that this is a female. However, the argument against this is that it is not described as having mammary glands. Also, Dutch easily identifies a female Yautja later in the novel, so I think we can rule the female Yautja theory out here. Could it be an artificially enhanced Yautja? Although this is a plausible theory, it does remind me of the Ultra Predator from the Predator movie, which I really do not like. However, if they can genetically engineer a Yautja to be larger and stronger, why wouldn't they create one that was smaller and faster? Although possible, surely a Yautja would want to test itself against prey, rather than give itself an unfair advantage where it would win all the time. If a Yautja can genetically enhance itself to become more evolved for the hunt, then what is the point of an initiation hunt? What is the point of only using bladed weapons against a Xenomorph? If you have made yourself more formidable than the prey you are hunting, then where is the challenge? For that reason, I'm not entirely sold on this theory. Could it be an adolescent Yautja. This is a very strong possibility, as the longer limbs and smaller, shorter body size could suggest an individual that has not quite grown into its limbs. Although relatively diminutive, I would still expect adolescent Yautja to be immensely strong, as this one is described. Furthermore, the high-pitched scream would suggest an individual who has perhaps not hit puberty. Wow, there's a sobering thought. Yautja puberty. Now, despite being able to understand this creature's physical abilities, I'm slightly more miffed as to why it would possess superior intelligence to an older Yautja. Surely age brings experience, and that is supported by the Yautja ranking system, with the elders as the wisest members. Another counter-argument to this individual being a teenager is that adolescents are often unblooded and need to go on their initiation hunts before they can autonomously hunt man. Perhaps this individual was a wonder kid Yautja that was so gifted that it was way ahead of the rest of the pack and permitted to hunt mankind. In my opinion, the teenage Yautja is possible but unlikely. Could it be an alien cyborg? This is another hypothesis that could make sense. With their biomasks, plasma casters and wrist gauntlets, predators already look like alien cyborgs. Various writers have also suggested that the wrist gauntlet is surgically grafted onto the individual's arm and fused with their very nervous system. Therefore, according to this, Yaucha are already cyborgs, so why not take that concept one step further and give an individual cybernetically enhanced limbs? On the other hand, this would contradict the aforementioned idea that Yaucha want to challenge themselves against prey rather than gain an unfair advantage. As a result, I would conclude that it is less likely that this was a cyborg Yaucha. Could it be a subspecies of Yaucha? This is where it gets really interesting for me. 
The super predator subspecies are already a larger variation, so why could we not have a smaller strand of the predators on Yautja Prime? Perhaps different Yautja have evolved for different hunts, with the stronger individuals evolved to hunt larger prey, and the smaller ones adapted to take on faster quarry. This would be like the lions and cheetahs of Africa, as they are both predatory cats designed to take on different prey within the same geographic location. I do like this idea, and it would certainly support the size differential, longer limbs and green blood concepts. Finally, could it be another species entirely? This is my personal theory, and although it may be less likely, or even less popular with diehard predator fans, I find it really interesting. Could it be possible that there are numerous species on Yautja Prime that have access to the same technology? Therefore the Yautja may only be one caste of the hunters. What I am therefore saying is that the species does not make the hunter, it is the technology that makes the hunter. This could serve as an alternate explanation to the river ghost as well as the creature from the original Predator design. Now I know the Alpha Predator backstory might have already developed this initial concept, but this could be an alternate story. Furthermore, the technology not species theory would also explain why Machiko Noguchi was accepted into the clan as a hunter. Many people have often asked where the Yautja got their technology from. Well, perhaps they did not make it. What if another race did, but made it available to species who wanted to become hunters? This would be like the Star Wars franchise, where a number of different creatures all have access to the same technology. The moment a member of a particular species proves their hunting prowess on Yautja Prime, they are qualified to receive the technology that makes you a predator. Therefore, the shark-skinned, long-limbed, smaller predator may be a qualified hunter from an entirely different species. Now, one argument against this idea might be that the creature in question bled green, however, a lion bleeds red, and so does a human. Therefore, could all the creatures on Yautja Prime bleed green? It may be that the only hunters we have encountered are the Yautja cast, however there could be a plethora of others with the same tech and hunting code of honour. So my question to you is do you like this idea and would you want to see it in a future story or do you think the Yautja should be the only hunter species that have sole access to this weaponry? Now I do not care too much about whether we all agree or disagree with these ideas, but I just love the debates and theories we can have regarding them. A well-written book should get you thinking, and this one has certainly got my mind racing with ideas. Surely, this is what is great about being a fan, the ability to look at the clues the writers leave us and go off on our own tangents as to what they could be. I think James A. Moore and Alan Morris did a fantastic job subtly introducing us to new Yautja creatures, opening the doors to new possibilities. This show and do not tell approach did remind me of the trophy cabinet scene in Predator 2 and the space jockey scene from Alien. These moments are fantastic in getting us the fans talking and make the franchises so exciting. I must confess that the subsequent movies made to explain these moments were huge disappointments and maybe that is a lesson that us fans have to learn. Be careful what you wish for as the version you get might just spoil the fantastic concepts that you had imagined. Unfortunately, this has certainly been the case for me with so many of the sequels and prequels to these movies. I will admit that I've not played the game Hunting Grounds, but is there a creature like the shark-skinned predator in the game? Guys, I have offered six possible theories to suggest what the shark-skinned predator could be, and I would love to hear yours. Before I go, please make sure that you leave your thoughts, theories, ideas and explanations in the comment section, and be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to subscribe.